we will continue our lessons on adjustments and adjusting entries. Uh, today the focus will be on amortization. So I had uh, briefly talked about amortization at the end of the lesson yesterday. So uh, just to summarize, uh, amortization, remember, is a type of an expense where we are trying to allocate uh, the assets uh, over a useful life. And what we do is we take that useful life and we amortize the asset over a number of years. So, um, going back to a bit more detailed explanation, an asset is something you purchase for the business to help you earn revenue. So let's assume that you have purchased a computer. A computer will help you earn revenue in more than one year. That means that you cannot expense the computer in the year that you have purchased it. That's why it is called an asset and it goes on your balance sheet. So what you do is you take the amount of uh, money that you have spent for the computer, you then make an estimate of the useful life of the computer and you divide the amount by the useful life. That amount that, not, that, that now you have remaining becomes your amortization expense for those number of years. Basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to allocate the amount of the asset that you have purchased over its useful life. Remember again that the asset moves to um, expense category as the years go by. So basically amortization is not a real, is not a, re, uh, is not a cash expense. It is an accrual expense, which means it does not involve cash at this point. So uh, when you are recording it. So the, the uh, amortization has to have a systematic and rational manner in order for you to amortize it. And that is what I just explained as an example of a manner. Uh, it basically, as I mentioned, it is an estimate and it, it helps you understand uh, how you have, uh, and it helps you match your expenses to revenue. So it does a lot of, uh, it follows a lot of principles as far as that's concerned. The adjusting entry for uh, amortization is given again in the slide. Amortization expense for that asset would be debited and accumulated amortization for that asset would be credited. So remember from yesterday, accumulated amortization is a contra asset account, which means that it, it has a credit balance on the, on the asset side. Usually the asset side has, the, uh, has debit balances. But accumulated amortization has a credit balance, which means that it reduces the value of the asset. And that's why it's considered a, a contra asset account. It is not a liability account because you do not owe anyone anything. That's why it is not a liability account. So it is considered a contra asset account. This is how it would be presented on the balance sheet. You have the actual, the original price of the asset and then you take away the accumulated amortization, which means that your net book value uh, uh, is uh, the original price minus the accumulated amortization value. So the net book value represents the value after all the amortizations have been taken into account for that asset. Accumulated amortization is an, uh, is an account that accumulates all the amortizations over the years for that particular asset. So let's say if you purchase something for $100 and your estimated life is five years, which means that the amortization expense will be $20 for five years each year. In the first year, at the end of the first year, your accumulated amortization account would total $20 because it's been one year. At the end of two years, it would be $40. At the end of three years, it would be 60. At the end of four years, it would be 80. And at the end of five years, the accumulated amortization account would be 100, which means that the net book value would be zero. So at the end of five years, you have fully utilized your asset. That is what this, these amounts tell you. Salvage value is also quite important for you to understand. Because salvage value, what it tries to do is it tries to uh, estimate the asset's value at the end of its useful life. So sometimes assets still have value even though you have stopped using them. So a computer may not have any value because it's outdated. 
but a, a desk might have value at the end of 10 years, let's say. So the value has to be taken into account. When this happens, you have to have the salvage value taken into account the formula. So basically, you would only amortize the original price minus the salvage value. The original price minus the salvage value and then you take divide that by the number of years and that's how you would come up with the amortization expense so graphically a straight line method looks like this you can see that you have the cost you have minus salvage value now you have the amortizable cost which means this is the amount that you are supposed to amortize over the useful life and then you take the amortizable cost and divide it by the number of years for use for life and you end up with the amortization expense. You can see from the graph on the other side that each year the amortization expense is the same. It's the same amount. There are various amortization methods. We only learn about one in this course. Okay? This is the one we learned about, the straight line method. So it's, it's very clear that each year you have the same amount. Now, as an example, we've talked about it, but I want to show you how the example would look like. So you purchased a furniture for $10,000, useful life is four years, and salvage value is $0. So that means 10,000 minus zero has to be recorded as part of your, uh, divided by four would be your amortization. But before that, we have to debit furniture, $10,000, and credit cash. This is your original entry. This is when you purchased the actual furniture. And then you would take the amortization calculation, which is 10,000 minus zero divided by four, which comes to $2,500 per year. You would amortize this, debit amortization expense, furniture, 2,500. Credit accumulated amortization furniture, 2,500 very important for you to understand the different difference between the original entry and the amortization entry. Amortization entry is done at the end of the year when you are adjusting the accounts. Remember these are adjustments to the actual accounts. So they are, they are not original entries similar to your supplies and the other types of prepaids and unearned uh, and the late arriving invoices. So amortization expense on the balance sheet and income statement. How would this look? On the balance sheet, we have talked about it prior to as well. Furniture minus the um, uh, accumulated amortization, you have net book value. And on the income statement, you can see you have other expenses such as rent expense, and then you have the amortization expense. And that's when you would add all those expenses. So this is what it would look like on these statements. When you are doing your exercises and your uh, comprehensive problem on Mirza books, you will see that the income statement will change and it will adapt the amortization expense when you enter this as a journal entry. And balance sheet would also change and use accumulated amortization as part of its accounts when you enter this in the journal. So to briefly summarize the five adjusting entries, I have uh, uh, created the slide this is very important. This can be your reference for all your adjustments. You can see very clearly here what happens and what actual uh, adjusting entry needs to be recorded. So this again is very important. You can see the supplies, uh, debit supplies expense, credit supplies. You can see prepaid expense, debit expense. So it can be rent expense, it can be insurance expense and credit the prepaid asset, prepaid rent or prepaid insurance and you have unearned revenues, debit unearned revenue, credit revenue, and then you have the late arriving purchase invoices, which means you have to debit the type of expense, it can be phone expense, internet expense, uh, other types of expenses, credit cash or AP, and you have the amortization entry, which is debit amortization expense and credit accumulated amortization. So very critical for you to understand and remember and refer to this slide when and if required. So once you have finished the adjustments, then you move on to do an adjusted trial balance. An adjusted trial balance means that this is a, 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 the final trial balance before you enter information in the balance sheet income statement. When you are using software uh, such as Mirza Books, you will know, notice that there is no such 
separate thing called an adjusted trial balance. The trial balance just gets updated with all the adjusting entries. So that means that once you've done the adjusting entries, the trial balance is your final trial balance or your adjusted trial balance. Okay, so that's how it would be. So we have finished all the types of different types of um, uh, adjusting entries in these three videos. Tomorrow, in the last video for this chapter, we will talk about closing entries, and they are also quite important to understand and and get your head around. So, thank you for listening, and as always, ARTW, accounting rules the world.